School is in. But are you really ready to learn? Open your eyes to a new day in education with The Awakening Educator, a program specifically designed to explore a new mindful way of educating our youth. Learn about social-emotional learning, new modalities of teaching, and the most relevant topics in education with your hosts, Susan Andrian and Megan Sweet. Susan and Megan will take you inside the issues by looking at them from different points of view, from policies and research to teaching models that are actually used in schools. There's never a dull moment in this classroom. Have any questions you'd like to ask? Maybe you have knowledge you'd like to share and share your thoughts live on air. Grab a pen and paper and get ready to open your textbooks and minds to a new way of learning on The Awakening Educator. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Andrian. I'm Megan Sweet. And this is The Awakening Educator. And today uh, we are talking to youth and talking to youth that are doing amazing creative things. Um, and we are so excited and honored to have Justin Carter Walton here, who also known as Jay Walt. Uh, best, uh, best known as Jay Walt is an 18-year-old rapper, songwriter, and poet from Oakland, California. Jay Walt began writing poetry at eight years old later finding his passion for hip-hop when he was 11 years old. Since then, Jay Walt has shared the stage with world-renowned artists such as Nas, Wu-Tang, T-Pain, Common, g Easy, Sheila E, E-40, Too Short, Sweet, uh, Sawidi, Black Thought, uh, Black Thought Talib Khalid, David Diggs, uh, in January 2019, Jay Walt was featured performer for the Fox Theater in Oakland, California, celebrating Stephen Curry's 10th year in Oakland. In 2018, Jay Walt featured on The Best of Fizzle Cipher, gaining a lot of attention and recognition for his punchline and lyrical uh, ability. At 15 years old, Jay Walt made his national debut appearance on Sway in the Morning, Doomsday Cypher, becoming the youngest MC ever to be a part of the Cypher on Sirius XM. This upcoming fall, Jay Walt will be attending Clive Davis Institute of Recording Music at, at New York University, NYU. Wow, damn, That's Justin. That's a lot, Justin. That's impressive. That's amazing. Thank you. You've been on the stage with some of my favorites. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, So, Megan, maybe uh, do you, you know, I know Megan was super excited to kind of hear about that you were on stage with Kamu. We were both swooning a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But maybe where we'd like to start is you said in your bio that you started uh, poetry at around eight and then transfers to to hip hop at around 11. Can you tell us like what got you started and what that process was like? No, of course. So, yeah. So, like I said, I started doing poetry um, in the second grade at the um, Martin Luther King Oratorical Fest, um, Mm -hmm. which is like part of the OUSD's um, big thing going on. And I started doing poetry because um, my cousin, um, Javad Jackson, um, he died and he was a poet and he was an MC and he was really conscious and talking about um, uplifting the community and a whole bunch of different things. So once he passed away, I kind of wanted to keep on continuing on, continuing like what he was doing. And also when I was um, in elementary school, I used to be like a, I would always like, I was kind of a knucklehead, kind of a trouble, <laughs> trouble kind of guy. And like one of my teachers was like, you know, you're always like using your voice. Like you should try to do it in a positive way. So then she started telling me I should start doing poetry and start just kind of writing out. And then I started doing poetry and yes, yeah, so I started performing at the Martin Luther King Oratorical Fest. That was like my first introduction into like poetry and performing. Um, and then, yeah, in sixth grade, when I moved on to middle school, I was continuing doing poetry, doing poetry. And then one of my friends, he was in eighth grade at the time when I was in sixth grade, and he was a hip hop artist. And he was rapping and I saw him perform at my school. And I was like, wow, like what he was doing was really cool. And also like the stuff that he was talking about interested me. Um, so then I, I reached out to him and I was like, hey, like, my name's Justin. Like, I also, like, I do poetry. Like, I'm into what you're doing. He was like, oh, if you do poetry, then, like, you could most definitely, like, start doing, like, rap and stuff. So, um, yeah, he kind of took me under his wing and I started doing more music-based stuff and hip-hop. 
I then ever since then, like I, I fell in love with hip hop and music and been doing it since then. So yeah, that's kind of like how I started in like the arts and poetry and hip hop. So. Awesome. I love I love hearing that you. I mean, it's always heart heartwarming for teachers to know that an, an, an encounter could be a positive one and could could have yeah. set you into a, a positive direction. And I'm just wondering. Sure. I think some folks, you know, even if they like writing poetry and things like that, and I've, I have actually seen you live as well at. Um, something. I don't remember what it was anymore. Okay. Um, but, you know, you also are really naturally confident and mm-hmm. and poised on stage. And I'm wondering if that was always yeah. there for you from the beginning or how that's also built alongside yeah. your, your passion. You yeah, know, for sure. So like, I've always loved just kind of entertaining people. Like before I started doing music, like I used to like, like to do magic. I just kind of like just seeing people's impressions and like people seeing people's reactions. Like I always just love making people happy. So I was always like kind of just comfortable on the stage and in front of people. Um, before I was really into like hip hop and poetry, I used to play the clarinet. Um, I used to like try to dabble in guitar and a whole bunch of stuff. So I really just like was always interested in like the arts and being creative. So yeah, um, it, I it definitely I definitely did have to like learn how to be more comfortable on the stage. Um, I feel like that just kind of comes over time. Like the first performance I ever did when I was in second grade at the Martin Luther King Oratorical Fest, I looked at the ground the whole entire time. Like I was so scared <laughs> looking at the audience. <laughs> so like came from like looking at the ground to like like now where like where I am now. Like it, um yeah, it's it's dope to see as like my progression. So yeah, it really just um took some time, but really like I always loved people and love just um making people happy. So What's that like when you look out at, if you're opening for Common, that's like tens yeah. of thousands of people. So I'm just yeah. always wonder what that's like to be standing on the stage and looking out. Can you just even describe a little bit about what that feels like or what happens inside yeah. of your body when you're in that space? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's most definitely, like the biggest, the biggest crowd I performed was, was 34,000 34, people at the mm-hmm. March for Our Lives rally in San Francisco. Um, they had me perform something that I wrote about like gun violence and particularly on like um, police brutality and like um, how and stuff like that. So I did that. And really I was, um, before I hopped on, I was just, I was really scared. I was really nervous because um, I was looking out to the crowd and I saw like a pre- predominantly like white audience and my piece mm-hmm. was, uh, was touching on like police brutality against like black and brown kids and everything. I was like, dang, I don't know how they're going to react to it. And I don't know, like, if this is, if this is the right piece. Um, then when I came on, when I went on stage, everyone was cheering for me. And then I just looked into the back of the audience and it was just like, it was packed. I couldn't see nothing but people. Um, so before, like, I was, I was really nervous. But then, like, as every time, as soon as I, like, step onto the stage, like, everything just kind of just goes away. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just kind of just zone in and focus on, like, my performance and my words. Um, but yeah, every time I usually like step onto a stage or like with a big audience or, um, or not, like I'm always like usually nervous, but every time I, as I step back onto the stage and start performing, like it all goes away. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because as you were talking about the social justice Mm -hmm. message of your music and, and Mm -hmm. all of the music that I've heard from you has some Mm -hmm. level of social justice that clearly is really important to you. And and in so much of hip hop music uh, and youth culture, uh, it can be challenging to find positive message or social right. justice message that that continues to hold that. And I'm wondering how how do you keep, hold on to that message, and how do you keep it in your music, and how do, what are some of the challenges of that? Yeah, um, really, um, I've always is one of the biggest things I've learned is to stay true to myself. Like when I was um like when after I did that um that show with Carmen, I was talking to Carmen, he was just like always just stay true to yourself. Like the message that you have is like it's powerful. Um I was talking to Logic too, um the rapper, I was talking to Logic, he was telling me the same thing, you know, just always stay true to myself. So like I really just believe in like my what I'm what I'm saying and my messages and everything. Um and I know like this is what's important. Like a lot of the youth are gonna listen to the people who look like them, you know, they're gonna listen to 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 music and I feel like music is the best way to really just say what you want to say and try to unite people and uplift. So yeah, I've 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 had hard times. Um, just, I've I've thought about times where like man, like do I want to keep on trying to do this? You know, this conscious type of music. Like, is it gonna be 
like too corny or is people really gonna like it and then i'm always just like no i bet like this is like what i love like i feel like this is what i'm made to do really just um, uplift people and um try to tell a positive message because there isn't a lot of like youth i know like who are making music and doing it positive way, right? you know like and that's what i'm yeah just trying to do so yeah i was just kind of just stay true to myself i know what i want to represent i know what i want to put out there so yeah that's so great. That's a, I mean, there's so many things that you have to offer, um, Justin, that make, I have an 11 year old son. So I've been thinking about him watching you and listening to that like, yeah. and listening to what you have to say. And um, yeah. this idea of, you know, you clearly have been following your internal voice for a long time and learning how to um, bring it out through your art, through either poetry or spoken word or um, music. And then I love that you're getting this encouragement from your mentors to continue to do that and to follow your voice right. because that's the only one that we have, right? You only have your own right. voice and your own perspective right. and that's so powerful and, and there's so much pressure to not do that. And I imagine even entering into the music industry, there'll be even more of that for mm-hmm. people wanting to shape right. your, your message or your voice. And so I love that you're getting mentorship from folks that are in the industry already, encouraging you to stay stay grounded and I know that your family probably supports you a lot since I know your <laughs> yeah, mom 100%. Yeah. I'm sure she helps to keep you keep you grounded and you have two 100%. brothers um I'm wondering how your family interacts with and supports you around this and what it must be like at home um or what you know how do you get grounded back when you're is it yeah. easy it's easy to be pulled off into the clouds when you're this successful this young and you're clearly really yeah. kind of connected to who you are so I'm wondering how you do that yeah yeah um yeah, that's one of the, like, the biggest things, like, my parents, like, my family and my parents in general have always been with me from the beginning, like, I'll just start when I kind of just started out, you know, performing at open mics, and, like, now to, like, I just perform at the, at the Oracle in Oakland Arena, like, they're with me, so, like, it's always, like, I don't know, they always kind of just remind me of, like, like, to always just kind of remain humble and to always, um, just remember your roots and remember like where you came from like my parents and like my my brothers are always like really just supportive and yeah I don't know that's kind of just I've never really been raised to be really I guess like cocky and and everything so like I don't know I've always just try to remain humble and just remain true to myself like my brothers are always really supportive um my family is supportive like my dad manages me and everything we have a really good relationship with that um, my mom always comes to my shows you know so um yeah I don't know like it's I've I've never really thought about um as just trying to brag or anything else because like all I really know and all I've really been taught to is just kind of just remain humble so yeah that's really just how I was brought up I guess mm-hmm. yeah if that answers your question yeah, yeah cool thanks yeah um I have so many directions that I could go with that, but I, I, knowing we only have limited time, I think what I really want to hear about is uh, this, the creative process. We're all in this shelter in place, right? We're all sort of stuck in the house and that can, that, that experience can either cause us to retreat and fall into a rut or a loss, or it can uh, inspire us to be creative. And we, we did get a chance yeah. to see some of the creative work that you were doing that we, we'd like to take a look at, but what is that process? Yeah. How did you, how did that come about and how have you been staying creative? Yeah. Um, I feel like, like for me, I feel like this is, this has been like the best time for me to really just um, hone in to like my music and my craft and just writing and really just, just kind of just reflect on what I want to do. And, Yes, yeah, so I've been using this time to to, to just write, um, write a lot. How that video came with like the the band members. So um, Kava Menzies, who's the vocal teacher at um, my my current high school, Oakland School for the Arts. She reached out to me and she was like, "Hey, like, um, I still want to be creative. And I still want to like do things. I want to collaborate with people. So I want to do this video with you, um, with you and your producer and, and DJ and drummer." Um, so I was like, "All right, let's do it." So how that kind of worked out was, um, so my DJ, DJ Teray, who's also part of the hieroglyphic, shout out DJ Teray. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, so he, he did a little drum beat first, then he sent that to me, then I put that in the app, and then I wrote my verse. And then after I wrote my verse, um, I sent that, that verse uh, to Kava Menzies, and she did the piano over it. 
Um, I then kind of put it all together and put that out there to the world. Um, so, so yeah, each that was piece really was dope. recorded separately and then yeah, put together? Each piece, exactly. Yeah, each piece was recorded separately, um, then put it all together in an app to, uh, to make it like what it was now. Um, so yeah, that was really cool and really refreshing just because I miss really just like collabing with people. And yeah, so that, that was dope to, to do and create. Um, and then yesterday I just wrote, I wrote a verse, just kind of talking. Cause I got an email from my school saying how like I probably won't be back at mm-hmm. school. Um, and then I kind of just wrote about that and how I was feeling, um, kind of talked about graduation and, living in these, these crazy times and stuff too. And I just recorded that and put that out as a little bit of freestyle that's out too. So yeah, I've really just been kind of just talking, like writing and talking about what I've been seeing, how I'm feeling as a senior in, in school, um, missing on, you know, graduation, prom, all these senior activities, you know, going on, which is not going to yeah. happen anymore. So yeah, yeah we're going to, we're I mean, going to be I mean, doing a show on that. I think we're going to talk maybe with your brother, about hoping we're going to talk about okay. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but no, they we like know it. that that's a huge <laughs> impact uh, on all seniors right now. But I'm wondering, Megan, yeah. I think Megan may have queued up the oh, yeah, I have video. Oh, yeah, queued up the video. So we'll uh, play so we'll it. take a look at the video. Yeah, cool. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. I'm going to share my screen. This is the awkward moment. So just hang on a second while I share my it's screen. It's all good. We're, we're and, not the super um, high tech. And I bet I did it wrong, so I'm going to stop sharing it and make sure I share it again the right way, because that's always my issue with the sound. This is the benefit okay. of pre-recording. Maybe we can... Yeah. There we go. Fix yeah. It. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go by the name Jay Walt. Got DJ Torrey on the drums. This message on the keys. Yo, I'm like, what can we do? We living in this epidemic, and it all feels new. They got it shelter in the place, but they can't talk to my truth. Arguing over toilet paper, you must be a fool. I'm getting sick and seeing Trump's face all over the news, speaking that nonsense. You see, ain't really saying nothing. Yeah, I'm blessed with a voice, that's why I'm saying something. Everybody stop the bluffing. This is something that is buzzing all around the world, so be smart and please stop the touch. But don't forget about that vitamin D. Go outside and exercise. Just remain six feet. Yes, hey. Just remain six feet. Go outside and exercise. Just remain six feet. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Hey. That's so amazing. Uh, that was so rad. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And again, just such a positive message. And I mean, I, I think yes. it's like calling out the the issues. Oh, mm-hmm. shoot, I'm sorry. Oh, no, speaking of bad messages, hold on a second. Ooh, sorry. That was no fun. Um, but, yeah, I think just the message of, like, of listening and um, and kind of naming some of these things that are kind of the absurdities of the moment, but also encouraging yeah. people to stay positive at home. Um, yeah, those are really amazing messages, especially for kids who – we're having some problems with youth taking this seriously. So your voice is really. All right. Right there. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious, like what are some advice that you might have for kids that are home or stuck, like how to start yeah. to build their craft or start, if they want to start learning how to flow or learning how, yeah. like, how what might they do to start to explore? Cause I'm, I'm thinking of this time as an opportunity for all of us to pick something and learn some yeah. new skill and just curious advice. 100%. Yeah, um, really just kind of just start writing out your thoughts, you know, like even if it's not in like, you know, in a rap or a poem or whatever, like kind of just start writing out whatever you're going through and like whatever you like, how you're feeling, like talk about the environment you're in right now, what you notice outside. Um, yeah, so if you want to just start writing, just start writing little stuff out, and then you can transition those thoughts into like, rhyme form you know you could figure out different rhymes you could rhyme in different rhyme schemes and stuff like that um but yeah really just just trying to force yourself to write you know but you also don't want to force you know but like if you want to start learning how to you know rap or write just i feel like yeah just pull out your pen and paper or computer or whatever and just kind of just start typing Mm -hmm. typing out however you're feeling um 
Yeah, what's going on? And then any advice for all these parents trying to homeschool, ways they might provide <laughs> opportunities for creativity for their kids? Uh, really just, <laughs> I mean, I just want parents to know that, like, um, like, creativity like it's really good to be creative you know especially during these times like you don't want to just you know just I mean of course school is, is positive is what we need but also you want to let you know your kids be creative and let let them be free you know so really just um I don't just let your kids be creative and have a way they they want to whether it's like you know writing or dancing or even baking cooking like however like they they want to you know, be creative, just let, let them be creative because I feel like it's really important, especially during these times where we're all kind of just trapped in one place, you know. Totally. Yeah, it's such an important outlet for, um, yeah, to be able to be creative and, and let that out. Yeah. Um, this has been such an amazing interview. I'm so grateful <laughs> for your time. I wish I feel like we could keep you Thank on for you. another hour and talk <laughs> with you no, even more. I'll be- so cool. uh, we'll have to reschedule that so we can have even more time with you. Um, I'm just wondering, in, in a couple of words, like when you think about going yeah. off to college next year, you know, and you're going out of the out of the nest, what are you most looking forward to? Yeah, um, the, next oh, the state. <laughs> yeah, the state. Yeah, um, my mother really just um, kind of just connecting with other with other people and other. Uh, kind of just other creative, you know, because, um, like, this, particularly, like, the school that I'm going to, NYU, I'm going for uh, for music and music business and recording and stuff, so I'm really excited to meet other people who have the same interest as me all over the world. Um, like, I just did a Zoom call, like, not too long ago with a, com- with a couple of the, the students who got admitted um, to NYU in my, and like, my class, and there are people from London, Senegal, like, all over the world, Canada, all the states, so like I'm really excited to uh, really just work with different people. Um, I'm excited to what else? Just be in another state. I've been in California all my life. I love California. I love the Bay Area. I wouldn't be specific, but um, yeah, I'm really excited to to venture off and just see more, you know, the world and see what New York has to offer. Yeah. Well, we are super excited to follow you as you, as your career, as you, you. you know, don't, when you're, when you're a big time, don't forget about us at the Awakening Educator. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Awakening Educator. I'm Susan Andrian. I'm Megan Tweet. And to continue our interviews today, we have two more creative uh, young people, uh, Kai and Bailey who are here to talk about their uh, time together as COVID-19. My, I am really grateful that they're on here today. They are amazing, creative young people who happen to be, uh, Kai happens to be really good friends with my son. So I appreciate you coming on today. Um, maybe we could start with Bailey. Uh, you can introduce yourself a little bit and then Kai. Um, I'm a fifth grader at Thornhill Elementary. Um, I'm 11 years old, and next year I will be going to um, Oakland School for the Arts for theater. Excellent. And Kai? I'm Kai. Uh, I go to Oakland School for the Arts right now. I'm also in the theater department, the acting sub department, sub pathway. Um, uh, I'm in, did I say 10th grade? I'm not sure if I said that yet. You didn't say that yet. Okay, and I'm in 10th grade. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Um, Welcome, both of you. Yeah, we're really excited to have you here. And so you're both going into theater, but I happen to know that is just one part of your creative uh, endeavors. Can you tell us maybe a little bit more about some of the other creative endeavors that, that both of you um, have been doing? Yeah, so um, we both, I started playing the violin in the third grade Uh, because it was mandatory at Thornhill Elementary Um, and then I Mm -hmm. liked it so I kept going and Bailey decided she wanted to do it too so we still do that and we'll play together sometimes. Um, We're both part of the same choir. We Mm -hmm. do that sometimes. Bailey, uh, I recently got into the part where it's there there's much less commitment but Bailey is now just entering the part where there's more commitment so we're kind of swapping out our roles there. Mm-hmm. Anything else? And um, I just started learning electric guitar. Wow. wow. Yeah, she did. That's amazing. Uh, the choir that you're in, you did some traveling with this choir 
uh, last year. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Kai did. Yeah, yeah. every summer the uh, perform. There are two part uh, departments: training and performing. Training is for the younger kids. The performing department will go on a tour every year or every other year, depending on how the budget looks. Um, and it depends. Like sometimes it'll be. Most of the time it's to Europe because that's where all the big cathedrals are and that's where it's more like choir centric. Um, this year, the choir was supposed to go down to Argentina, but that is not looking like it's going to happen anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's now we're getting into the sort of disappointment <laughs> of, of what this has been like. What, what has this been like and what are some of the ways that you guys have been keeping yourselves active and creative and entertained? Do you want to start? Um, well, I, first of all, really, really miss my friends because I'm kind of used to seeing them like every day, but I still, um, FaceTime with them and Zoom with them. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. And, um, um, also I'm trying to use this time as like a time where I can spend more time with family, though that's sometimes hard because Kai's a lot of homework, Mm. but yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think uh, I wonder how you feel, Bailey, about um, leaving. You're leaving Thornhill, but from from home rather than having the official goodbye, and you won't be seeing some of your friends maybe for a long time because when you start back to school, you'll all be going to different schools. So, I'm wondering how you're feeling about that. Yeah, um, actually, I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, it's really sad because. I'm kind of like a person who really likes tradition. So when something kind of goes off, it's just weird. And so um, this year is really hoping for kind of like a graduation that my brother had because that was really fun. I remember because we had a party after and it was really fun. And I wanted something like that. But then this happened. And then um, the teachers are saying we're probably going to do a redo, but I know it's probably just not going to be the same. Hmm. Yeah. yeah thanks for that how's school going for you Kai going to school online I think a lot of high school kids are finding uh, it uniquely challenging <laughs> I'm a little bit conflicted on this because a lot of people are saying it's much harder and they feel like it's a lot more work um, to me it doesn't feel like there's a lot more work it just feels like there's less schedule and motivation mm. um, I feel like the like the reason why there's more homework kind of makes up for the fact that there's less class time like we'll only have classes for 40 minutes and we only have classes every other day. Um, So I think the more homework makes up for the classwork, I think it's just hard finding, you know, like I'll, I'll try to block out times and say like, this is when I'm working. This is going to be 100% work time. I'm not going to do anything else. And then I might get distracted by something. It's just finding, I'm trying to find ways to stay motivated and on task so that I can finish my stuff. I think that's the biggest difficulty there. You sound like me. That's my challenge, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of our challenges. Yeah. Um, are, have you guys been playing music together during this time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely more than before the quarantine. I'm a little bit grateful because it felt like the world was moving too fast before mm-hmm. all this happened. It felt like yeah. I needed to catch up. So on one hand, I get to catch up. I get to play music with my sister. I get to, you know, I get to clean up my room finally, even though I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really done that yet. But I'm going I, I, to Kai, are you point. sharing these ideas with I'm, us? Because I like... gasped. <laughs> <laughs> I get to clean up my room finally. Will be words never uttered by my child ever. <laughs> so that's great. <laughs> I mean, I can't really walk in there at moments. Yes. So. <laughs> uh, um, I think I saw you guys playing outside uh, on the, at, like in the evening for your neighborhood. Is yeah. that what I saw? Yeah. So there was originally, there was a thing where it was like at seven o'clock, people are supposed to go out and like applaud the people on the, the workers on the front lines. Uh, we thought that was going to happen. And so we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we played our music instead of applauded? Nobody really applauded at all yeah nobody nobody it showed kind up of awkward. there was one dude who drove by in a car and just kind of like gave us a thumbs up and then just kept driving uh yeah it's a neat thing though that people are doing that i think it's a neat i I've, I've seen a few people doing it too and there's it doesn't look like italy right so in italy and people are playing on those balconies and there's a narrow like pathway where you can kind of hear each other better in the united states our houses are a little bit more separate but I love the idea of 
of playing outside for people and just kind of offering that gift. So I'm sure it did feel awkward. I get that. But I also just think it's super cool that you put yourself out there like that. And um, I'm sure people are really touched, but they don't always say so. So just know that probably you did touch some people anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm curious because for mo for many young people who are stuck with just each other, brother and sister, uh, without having other people to interact with, uh, might be driving each other crazy. But is that does not seem to be the case for you guys. So what can you tell us a little bit about your your relationship and how you uh, support each other during this time? So. Yeah, we've always gotten along. Um, probably, I don't know why, but we've always gotten <laughs> along. So, um, yeah, during this time, I keep asking Kai to finish his homework early so that way we can play and do video games and things like that. But that's also hard because, yeah. I think it's also special. Like, I've heard a lot of my classmates saying one of the, hard, one of the hardest things is they are stuck with their family. Mm -hmm. And I feel really lucky on that point because I I, pretty, I like my family they're pretty cool um, they're pretty tolerable people to work with and <laughs> I don't know there's always been something like I've all Bailey and I have always been referred to as like the siblings who get along as compared to my friends a lot of my friends from elementary school especially would like fight with their old, younger sibling or older siblings and like get in like battles where like punches would be thrown and stuff like that <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why like I always I remember I saw like when I was when I was much younger when Bailey I think was around one or two I saw an older brother like kicking their younger sibling oh. and I really didn't like like that like really really got me upset so I think like it was around then that I'd be like yeah no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be a jerk that doesn't that's not cool yeah that's really sweet that's um yeah it's special and I I, I imagine that during being you know, staying home and being away from your friends, there's a, there's some solace in being able to hang out with each other and play music with each other and have things that you can share. Cause five years is a big age difference. So for, for some siblings that just would be hard to be able to connect, but it sounds like you found a way to connect with each other through your art or video games, the great generational connector <laughs> and um, just they're hanging out. So that's really cool. So what kind of music do you guys like to play to get, like, what is your, where, where's your, where do you get excited and get some creative sort of excitement around? Well, normally the music that we'll do together is music that our teacher assigns us, mm -hmm. um, mostly because we are both still learning. So a lot of the pieces are like from the learning books that we can do. And sometimes uh, my teacher knows that we like to play together. So she'll give me the duet part or she'll give, a piece that we can both play together. Um, sometimes we have, normally we'll have a concert called the Pops concert, like it's supposed yeah. to be popular music mm -hmm. and she'll give people orchestra mm -hmm. parts and we'll play like Star Wars or Indiana Jones or something fun like that. And so whenever we do that, Bailey and I will practice together if we have separate parts. Yeah. So that's always fun. And um, sometimes, well, this doesn't happen anymore because we're in quarantine, but um, usually sometimes after we learn a song and then Kai learns the duet we sometimes like to play it in our church because um the members in our church really like it and that's great really nice the other thing I know you're doing during this time is some video editing is that right did I hear that you're doing some video editing work yeah I'm, tr I'm trying to get better at that um one of the things I I've, I'm kind of falling in love with like the technical aspect of filming things like a lot of the CGI type stuff and uh, compositing things together. Uh, recently our choir is trying to do this virtual choir thing where we each like sing into our own camera and try to put it together. So they recruited me to do one of the videos. They're recruiting different people to do each. So I've been assigned to one of them. So I'm trying to figure out, a, I haven't, fi I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out um, eventually. Uh, and I've also been, there's a, video that one of uh bailey and my close friends who now moved to rochester he came over here last summer to film a star wars video just for fun uh and i'm still doing cgi for that stuff like that so it's been a, a long run but it, the, the the quarantine has given me much more time to learn more about stuff and to touch up a lot of my shots and make sure that they look 
not necessarily flawless, but pretty good. Mm-hmm. Are you doing yeah, anything that you can use this time to, um, I love what you said about feeling like you could slow down a little bit and mm-hmm. um, it is the gift of this time. And I'm, I'm kind of anxious. I'm glad for us to get back out again, but I'm anxious to lose that time to be able to have this like, an excuse to stay home and focus on things that we really care about and to, to do that kind of thing, like working on video, video editing and things that generally just don't make it to your list of things that you're able to, to do. Um, I know you guys are going to share something with us. Is that going to be a video or are you going to play something for us? Yeah, we're having um, some technical difficulties, but earlier today we recorded ourselves playing the violin. Um, my dad is trying right now to figure out how to, upload that for some reason the, the computer is not working or something like that so okay. that will get to you eventually okay oh, good. We'll, we'll, we'll edit in, edit in. Yeah, yeah i'm excited to hear you guys play that's really cool oh thank you so as you think about getting ready to go back out into the world again um what's the first thing you think you're gonna do when you're like get to not be in quarantine what are you the most excited about um probably <laughs> well first of all going to a bunch of restaurants because <laughs> I mean I love my mom's cooking but I'm getting sick of it <laughs> and um also to see my friends again probably yeah and yeah Kai where are you gonna go I'm just gonna go out I'm gonna follow Bailey she has an agenda <laughs> <laughs> we've had multiple discussions of Bailey's like we're gonna go here then we're gonna go here and then my dad will contribute what about here okay we'll go there next so I'll just I'll just follow along yeah What's the first restaurant you want to go to, Bailey? What What do you like in your mind? Like, this is the first spot. Um, probably any dim sum restaurant. Mm. <sighs> that is what yeah. I've been looking to, Bailey. That is exactly what I want as well. That is... I'm uh, with you. <laughs> now, now you're making me crave dim sum. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of my cooking, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure my family is sick of my cooking is i'm trying to get them to are you guys doing any cooking during this i've been i've been taking over two dinners per week if i can uh to relieve stress on my mom's shoulders also because i should learn how to cook anyway it's a good skill to learn and i've been making desserts like donuts and um soon i'm gonna make cake pops oh nice i have heard that you are quite the baker gus has has shared that that with me. So I, this is another time to sort of build on that skill as well. So what would you say are the top creative uh, gains or skills that when this is all over and we came out, what, what do you feel like are some things that you've really grown in? Well, um, something I've probably grown in during quarantine is probably taking more walks because before this, I didn't really care, and there wasn't enough time to take walks anyway, but now there's a lot more time, and I want to go out, like, really, really bad, so I've been taking more walks with Kai and my dog. Nice. You wanna keep, keep, uh, do you want to try and keep that going when you get back out again? Yeah. Nice. That's great. Well, I think we are almost at time. Um, and is there anything else that you want to make sure that our audience knows about what this is like to be a young person during quarantine? I think I would say it really depends on who you are and who your family is. And while there's some people like Bailey and I who feel lucky that we're like slowing down and that we have this break, there are also people who are not having as good of a time. And I think we should lend our hearts out to them. Um, that's really sweet, Kai. I agree. I've been worrying about those kids uh, a lot. Yeah. What about you, Bailey? Um, well, I know a lot of my friends have just been missing, like, daily routine and just, um, like, seeing people outside of their family. And I feel the same way. So, but I just keep telling myself, like, this is going to be over at some point. Like, even if it's not in a month or anytime soon, it will be over at some point. Yeah, that's great. So keeping your focus on, on, the, on what will be possible and to remember this isn't forever. I think that's really helpful advice too. Wise are words. Very wise. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. we 
Yeah, thank you so much. This was such a wonderful chat. I'm so excited to know you guys are out there doing this work. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. This was fun. Yeah. here with Savannah. We are so excited to have another youth guest with us for our three-part series on youth. And, and as you all know, this series is about creativity during a time of crisis. And there are so many amazing things happening all over the country with young people uh, doing super creative things. And Savannah is one of those people who has really just taken her talent and her art and created some beautiful jewelry that she's using for a cause. So we are super excited to have her here today with her mom, Caitlin, who's visiting with us too. Uh, so let's give you a chance to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Savannah Goldman. I'm in sixth grade, which is elementary school for where I live. Um, I live in Massachusetts and I'm a competitive horseback rider since for, since I was three. And, wow. um, I love skiing. I'm a former ski racer, um, and I love hanging out with my friends and school. Awesome. <laughs> I did not know you were a competitive horseback rider. That's yeah. really cool. Have you been able to get out to the horses throughout this? Are you still seeing the horses? Well, I went a lot in the beginning, but now they're really strictly not letting many people at all come in because it's just very easy to spread. Yeah, that must be really hard to not be able yeah. to see the, the horses. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's really cool, man. I didn't so, know horseback riding either, so that's, yeah. that's neat. That's, um, and then sixth grade already having an Etsy store. So um, yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you got interested in jewelry making and what your, what your process is. Well, I started making um, my CB jewelry um, this summer, actually. From I got a lot of ideas from Pinterest, YouTube, and a bunch of social media platforms. Um, I loved expressing my creativity throughout my work, but I just started telling people about it right after my February vacation, and then it started blowing up, and it it's just really been fun, and it's taken up a lot of my time, even because we don't have anywhere to go these days, but yeah. yeah. <sighs> yeah, we definitely don't have anywhere to go, which... Yeah. <laughs> Which can be difficult, but it's it's amazing to have that kind of time. Um, what is your process like? How do you come up with a concept, and where do you get your supplies? Well, I get my supplies from mostly from Michaels, actually, mm -hmm. and then Joanne's AC Moore, which just went out of business because mm -hmm. Michaels bought it out. But um, I get a lot of it from Amazon too, and. The process is mostly, it really depends. I always have some kind of vision of what I'm going to make in my head. And now I have so many beads that I could make pretty much anything that I could vision. But it's just, it's become a lot easier than it has been in the beginning. Because before I had to do like 
I had to look through so much to see what could I could make, and it's really expressed my creativity also. Now, that's one of the things I love and that can be challenging about the artistic process is you have an idea in your head, and then sometimes being able to take that idea in your head and make it happen in real life um, can be challenging, right? So we, we think mm -hmm. we know how to do it, and it takes longer or it's harder than at least for me, I know everything I envision in my mind is like 10,000 times harder in real life. And I've had to <laughs> learn to embrace that process. I'm wondering how you, it sounds like you've been sticking with it and it's gotten better, but what was that process like for you, especially when you started out now and or started out and where you are now? Like how do you, how, what kind of growth have you seen yourself go through the last you know, few months? I just, I've been so much more mindful and I really understand the use of supplies and what certain type of money can do. And yeah. it's just really quantities matter. And I was, it's just, it's brought me through a lot and it just so much makes more sense to me also because it's just creative mind has like helped me express myself. You bring up a really important point around, like, especially for uh, when you're trying to raise money for something, and we're going to talk about that in a second, yeah. but the business end of things of, like, there's actually a, you have to factor in the cost of what you're making, mm -hmm. and then how much you're selling, and all of the things that go into that, and um, I'm, and it sounds like that was a process, sort of figuring that out. What were, um, yeah. What was that process like? Like, how long have you been doing this? And how did you, you know, how has your process evolved? Well, ever since last summer, I started making the jewelry. And I know that there's always been, I knew that I wanted to sell on Etsy, but I, I just never was sure when I would be ready to do it because I thought that it would be so hard. But Etsy has actually made it a lot easier than I thought it would be. And it was just, also, it was just, everyone has been super supportive, too, on, like, like, there's no one that's really told me I couldn't do it, and it was kind of, like, my dream to, like, have a successful business that I'm donating 100% of my profits to, also. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. I mean, that's really amazing. Not only have you had the motivation to create something and to develop a store online. And it sounds like you're learning about the business side of that, which is that there's supplies that you need to get before you can produce something. You have to quantify your own time to help you understand how much to charge. But then you made this choice to actually donate hundred percent of your proceeds. So can you tell us a little bit about what was behind that for you and why that felt like an important choice? Well, it, the camp that I'm donating my proceeds to is called Summer Stars Camp for the Performing Arts. Summer Stars is a nonprofit organization with free tuition and transportation. Campers range from 12 to 17 years old and stay overnight at the boarding school campus. I got associated with Summer Stars because both my parents have worked there since the camp started. Yeah. What, um, so you've seen the motivation, you've seen the impact that the camp can have. So you want to be, able yeah. to, are you then helping like contribute to the scholarship fund? Then the proceeds that you have go to that. Is that where that goes? Yeah. It's just, since it's nonprofit, um, it's just donating to the tuition and the, yeah. And how long is that camp? So how long do they, you said they come overnight and stay at the boarding school. How long do the kids get to stay there? nine days and it's really just I've seen how much of an impact it makes on so many kids in there I've always I've been there since birth not as a camper but just as a staff kid to hang out with the other staff kids but it it's just done so much for so many people because so many people haven't been dealt the as good of the cards as I have mm -hmm. and I'm just really grateful that these kids have this summer camp to go to when they couldn't if 
in some situations that they really couldn't. Yeah. And you're 12 now. Is this going to be your first year going to the camp, like as a camper? Well, I'm going to try to apply this year, but yeah, I'm really hoping to raise enough money that I can have at least one camper spot that I can donate as much for one camper spot at least. So then I'll be able to at least bring my contributions because I don't need it as much as other kids do. So how much do you have to raise in order to create one spot for one kid? It's about $500, which, which how things have been going so far, I'm, I'm very hopeful that I can get there and maybe even more. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Wow, that you can that you want to so the the camp kids audition for it then, and then they're able to go. And it sounds like it brings kids in that have been. Um, do they audition, or is it like a lottery? Or well, it's actually um, they have to get a recommendation from a performing from any teacher, teacher that knows them, hmm. and then they have to write an essay about why they should be chosen to go and there's no audition process there's no like lottery but it's it's just all from character Mm. yeah um i'm i'm curious around um what do they do is it musical theater are they learning instruments i mean i i happen to know both your parents and know that they are like incredible mu- musical teachers so yeah. I'm, I'm curious what that what the camp experience is like well so even though it's nine days there's a bunch of different classes and workshops and it's all and then there's a show at the end and it's either they make a bunch of different classes they have such as um, freestyle rap, poetry. Mm-hmm. They can make their own band, singing. Obviously, it's performing arts. Um, there's African dance. There's hip hop. There's just so many opportunities for people. If folks want to support you, support your cause, and also buy some beautiful beaded jewelry. Um, yeah. How do they do that? How do they find you? Um, well, we actually started sending it out to people at right after my February vacation. But then um, what my parents sent the links to so many of their friends and people associated with Camp Summer Stars. And then they told people about it. And you can search me up on Etsy at Abatiwa Jewelry. Can what you spell that out for us? Oh, I saw a mag game going too. Is she going to say the same thing? <laughs> it's A B A T I W A H J or jewelry J W E L R Y, but um, no spaces, no spaces, no spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's on Etsy.com. Etsy. Etsy. And what does the name mean? <clears throat> um, Abatiwa is from the song "Turn the World Around." Um, it stands for or it means so is life. Mm. And it's just go with the flow. Oh, that's really nice. That's a, that's a great, that's a great uh, framing for these days in general of yeah. going with the flow. <laughs> and so is life. It's a, it's a very, um, very timely phrase for sure. Maybe what I'll start using. Um, and so amazing that you're choosing to not only tap into your creativity, but that you're using it for others and for the benefit of the community. It's such an amazing and very mature thing to do as an 11 year old turning 12, um, living with an 11 year old myself. I can't imagine that she would be doing that. So uh, I'm really impressed by, um, yeah, by your maturity and by how much you want to contribute to something that's so meaningful to you for others. It's a really beautiful, it's a really beautiful intention. It's, it's really Thank beautiful. you so much. <laughs> and I'm wondering, Caitlin, um, you must be really proud as a mom and wondering what your experience at watching her sort of have this take off and have this be her vision, um, what it's been like for you. Yeah, well, it's, I'm very proud of Savannah and from the beginning, you know, she started making her jewelry and she said she wanted to start 
the Etsy shop. And I said, well, do you, do you know how to do that? And she said, no, I'll figure it out. So I said, do you need help? And she said, no. So she came to me one day with the whole, everything loaded on to Etsy and just said, uh, they need, you know, they need your information because she's underage. You know? <laughs> so, wow. so she's done this. Um, she's, she, she's done it on all on her own, except for the parts that you need an adult to sign off on. She, she's done it on her own. And she has a lot of, um, a lot of our friends and um, family are really supporting her in this. And um, I think, uh, I think the word's starting to get out. So I'm very proud of her. Great. That's really great. We really appreciate both of you coming on. We'll make sure to put a link to your Etsy store on our website and when we and, and we talk about the show. And um I hope you get back to your horses soon. Uh, so yeah, you know, you do. <laughs> um that connection is such a beautiful one between human and horse. So um mm-hmm. I imagine you both are missing each other. So yeah, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. It's such a great No problem. Great thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. So much. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we're continuing on with our series of Talking to Creative Kids, and today we have Elizabeth Brandy. So welcome, Elizabeth. You want to tell us a little Hi, about yourself? So I'm nine, and I'm from Queens, New York. I like hot dogs, pizza, and hamburgers, and I love fashion design. Nice. That's a good yeah. description. And I know you I like a lot of those things, them, right? too. So. You like those things, too, Susan? I do. <laughs> How did you get interested in fashion design, Elizabeth? So when I was like, I want to say six-ish, I don't remember what birthday, but I found one of these sewing kits and I brought it over to my aunt's house. And me and my aunt's housekeeper, Nellie, we like sewed together and I think I just got hooked from then. Oh, wow. Wow. I've actually, I think I've been sewing for like three-ish years now. That's and I make a lot of stuff. I, I also do a lot of other things like needlework. I crochet and I embroidered. And I just learned how to embroider from a book. So I embroidered a pair of jeans. I, like, cut them to shorts and I embroidered all over them. Well, No not. way. That's really? amazing. I actually have them in my room if you want to see. Absolutely. We definitely would love to see. Okay. Wow. So you put like a flower on there? Mm-hmm. And like a little triangle on the bottom. That's I amazing. Have no idea why I put that. And on the back, I sewed on a pocket out of another, out of my neighbor, Lisa. Like I think two years ago, she gave us like this big bag of like scraps that are like samples, I guess. And I use, a, and I use them a lot. So, and when I was like just sewing like little bags and stuff, I use these a lot. That's a really, you know, what you're doing is um, called like upcycling. So you're you're re- you're reusing other products. It's a very, very hip and on trend thing to be doing, Elizabeth, to be using Absolutely. other fabric and reusing them in that way. That's really cool. And it's environmental too. So it's yeah, it's totally hip and good for the environment. Right. Mm-hmm. So where do you get your ideas from? Like what what kind of fuels your inspiration? Do you think? So I don't really remember, like, before, like, this year, but this year my parents introduced me to this great show called Project Runway. <laughs> I literally finished yeah. season eight, which was the only, was, like, the first season they had on Hulu. I literally finished season eight last night. Oh, wow. And I got inspired by some of that. I actually got inspired by a lot of that. That's actually what inspired me to, like, embroider jeans and, like, show it off to my family. They've also inspired me to create, like, a collection of old shirts for Barbie dolls. And over the past few days, I've made a lot of clothes. Um, so I've used some of this felt from, jo- from I think, Joanne Fabric, too. Mm-hmm. It actually is, like, kind of sketchy, and it fits the Barbies good. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of clothes down here that I made. I made That's this cute. one. Oh, my gosh. That is such a cute dress. Thank That's you. That's really cute. So... Elizabeth, on the fabric, so you showed us the felt fabric. What What is the design on there, and how did you get that design onto the felt? Is there an art no. piece to it in addition to the sewing? No. So it was, it's like a felt material, like a soft one, and 
I and it came with this. It's gray with like this really. Pr it came with like this really pretty white print on it. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to see with the camera. I'm just gonna try. Oh yeah, I can see it. Oh, now. I can see it. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you. But it would be really cool if I was able to embroider my own fabric, or like maybe like make it, or like maybe like design online, get it to like make like they did on Project Runway for one of the challenges. I know that's amazing now, right? That you can create a design and yeah. then it prints right onto fabric. That would be. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be so cool. What are the kinds of things do you think you would put on that fabric? Mm -hmm. Do you think you'd put like flowers or shapes or colors? What, what would inspire I'd you? I'd probably do rainbows and unicorns because I love rainbows and unicorns. Who doesn't? Rainbows and unicorns are the best. And, cat and catacorns. Those are actually a thing. What's a catacorn? Cat Is that like a cat unicorn? Yes, exactly like, that actually. <laughs> like unikitty? <laughs> yeah. Unikitty. Like, except non-Lego. <laughs> they can well, also be Lego. Oh, not Lego, I see. <laughs> yeah. So on um, Project Runway, they're always talking about sort of design aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have an idea of like the – so you like unicorns and – Yeah. Do you have – um, really think – I don't have any of those fabrics, but I just make – I just make it work what I have. And also, I don't really know as much like stitching things as mm – -hmm. I know how to do like the lazy daisy stitch and like a running stitch for embroidery. And I can also do only like the running stitch and the whip stitch for like normal sewing. Mm -hmm. I don't really have like such a wide range of stitches. I have a sewing machine, but we don't really use it because my parents, because my mom's laptop is all set up on the thing on the table. Mm -hmm. But so I normally just take my two simple, very simple no known of stitching things and I make a lot of clothes for Barbies. Right, I've actually haven't started making clothes until like two days ago. I guess I sort of got inspired by the finale because I had to create big collections. It was a real. It was originally supposed to be an I Love NYC collection, but then I realized I don't really have anything that represents NYC, so I just started making random clothes. I love well, that you made a whole Barbie doll collection. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can just show us it and then also describe it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of my favorites. I made it this morning. It is out of my, it's out of a, at, at, out of like the, the sleeves, like the pant legs of the, of the shorts I showed you. And I cut out like it. So the, the yellow part is on the bottom and it, and I made it into a dress with like a side open. That's actually how I do most of my dresses. Cause that's the easiest way to make sure it's not too tight and they can't slip on and they can't fall off or, and, or not get on. Yeah, that's a good strategy. You need to make sure that they can be held, they can stay on and not come off. So I use an Ariel Barbie doll. I guess I got really inspired with this, like, deep blue fabric in the green fabric I had. I made her, like, a seaweed-like cloak in a, sle in a sleeveless blue dress. I also have one with a one-over strap. That's also what I normally do for my dresses. I have one with a one-over strap that's open on the side. This nice. one is closed on the side, except for this part. It was kind of uneven. Yeah. That's so great. you made all it. of these dresses in two days, all of these Barbie dresses in two days with the, with the accessories too? Oh, I didn't make the accessories. Those are already plastic, but like, are you talking, are you talking about like the cloak? Yeah. Yeah. I made, yeah, I think I made all those in two days. I also made another cape that you can just slip on and off the head. I love that. Nice. Do you think you'll ever want to move on to, I, I know you're already starting to decorate clothes for yourself, Elizabeth. Do you think you want to move on to like creating like human clothes or are you, are you sticking yeah. with Barbies for a while? I want to, my mom actually has, we actually bought a pattern and some space cat fabric like last year, I think at Joanne Fabrics and we haven't gotten around to making myself a dress, but I want to make the dress so I can just be like, Hey guys, if we ever go back to school, Hey guys, guess where I got this dress? They guess. <laughs> have no idea. I say, no, where I made it. Yeah, that's incredibly cool to be able to make your own clothes and to start with an inspiration at this age. That's really amazing that you're spending your time that way. What a cool way to spend your forced um, yeah. confinement. Oh, I see something else coming into yeah. our view. What else you got? Well, this is not mine. This is my little sister. She almost overstuffed it. So, but the first day that I got my sewing machine, it was actually from Delaware and we were at my aunt and uncle's house and the uncle gay and then we used some star wars fabric which i made a handbag out of oh I, this is the pillow not the handbag and we used some of this popsicle fabric and we made a pillow and then on the popsicle side with the leftover star wars fabric that we used we each cut 
um, either mommy or Aunt D, they cut out our our initials, our first initials, and then we sewed them onto our pillow with hand stitching. Oh, that's really great. So, so it sounds like you got a lot of patterns. support from your parents, too, then, to do your, your artwork, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really neat. But normally I just, but over the past few days, well, basically today, sit on the floor, put on Disney+, Plus, put on a princess movie or princess sequel movie, sit down, make little Barbie clothes. That's basically what I did for after I was done with my homework today. Well, and so you've been on homeschool now for a few weeks and, and has this. Actually, my teachers, actually, we got Google Classroom and there's a Gmail so they can like Gmail us and stuff. And also there's Class Dojo with the parents use. Mm-hmm. They can just like put on my laptop sometimes and I just like click on the links. But I use Gmail more often. And also you can set up video chats with your friends. I, I set one up with my with one of my besties, Shayla. I tried to invite some other girls, but they never responded except for Caitlin. And then I didn't get, and then I didn't get her text until like two days after. I think you're selling yourself a little short with some of the clothing, oh, yeah. some of the design for people oh, yeah. you've been doing. Sketching. Also, I've been sketching. Oh. I don't really have, I don't really have a plan to make this, but I've been, I sketched this this morning. It's like a mermaid outfit. Oh yeah, nice. I got the inspiration from this mermaid I sketched also today. This is not a clothing thing. It's just a drawing I made. It's all creativity. I think that finding ways to be creative during this time is such an important. What I love hearing, Elizabeth, is the excitement in your voice as you talk about doing something that you really care about and doing this creative outlet during a time when a lot of kids, and my own in particular, he's kind of struggling at home. He's getting kind of bored. He's getting kind of grumpy sometimes, and he's struggling with being at home. So it sounds like uh, the, that you found, like, you built on a creative passion you already have, and you're using this time at home to really explore it more, which is really cool. It's a really neat thing to do during this time. Thank you. Yeah. You have any questions, Susan? I'm just curious. Um, it sounds like you're, you're seeing some of your friends, but it sounds like you've been missing your friends a little bit. What are some of the ways – that um and but like Megan said you've been keeping yourself really creative which is super exciting I I also am really uh amazed by the excitement in your voice I'm wondering how you keep yourself going how do you keep those creative juices flowing and sort of when it starts to feel hard what do you do to take care to sort of get back into the creative groove I either take a break if my dad always says if something's more frustrating and fun walk away from it so so I think like once I had to take a break because something was I was really struggling, I was like put down three mm-hmm. seconds later. Okay, I'm ready. So after you took the break, you were able to come back and, yeah. and, and, and also, like get, make it through. Mm-hmm. And also the one of the ways I like keep the creative juices flowing, I watch a lot of Project One Way. That also that's inspired me. And also when I started making dresses, it sort of inspired me like, hey, what about this idea? So 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 hey, this looks great. Yeah, that's a really great point. I think you said a couple of things that are really important, Elizabeth. One, I, I love your dad's advice. I was just thinking that I needed it for myself, um, mm-hmm. even just today, which is if it's not fun, walk away is really great life advice. Um, so great job, dad. Um, but also, I want to use it. Yeah, All right. Thanks, dad. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'll, uh, I will use it and I'll, I'll, I'll give credit to your dad on that one. But I also, I think that you're naming something really important that um, you actually get a lot of inspiration from watching other people who are doing their artwork and living their passion, especially in an area that you like, because I, like you, like to sew clothes. And I've spent many times watching Project Runway while also using my sewing machine and Mm -hmm. sewing clothes. So I think that's really neat that you're finding inspiration there. And you also just said that you are trying Yeah, we both watch Project Runway. We're both big fans of Project Runway. Mm -hmm. I've only watched season eight because that's the first season on there, but that's pretty awesome. Well, there's a new one on that from Heidi Klum that's on on Prime you could watch too. It's called called Making the Cut. Making the Cut. (laughs) Yeah, Daddy Daddy and Mommy told me about that. I think we're going to wait till we finish the season of Project Runway, like the seasons that are on Hulu before we advance onto the Prime one. That's a good a plan. Smart idea. Um, your parents are really awesome and clearly on top of it, uh, which I'm not surprised about either. 
But I think that it's the interesting thing about your love of Project Runway mm -hmm. and what you've been able to do is that th that you often see the productive struggle of the of the artists on uh, the designers, and that being able to see that even some of the best um, designers have to go through that productive struggle, that like hard part, that part where you were just saying there were, when you have to take a break. Um, and it sounds like you really get that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what does it feel like when you're able to finally do the breakthrough of like, Oh, I've had the struggle, but then now I've been able to figure it out. What's that experience like? So for my first dress, the one I showed you with like that strap, mm -hmm. it took me forever for that strap. And when I was done, I was like, woo, inside my head. Yeah, totally. I didn't really show that on the outside. Cause my, <clears throat> I think my mom was on a call. Uh. <laughs> On behalf of moms that are on calls, I thank you for doing it inside your head rather than out loud. But what did you learn then? So you, you figured out how to do that strap, um, and now you said you use it all the time. So what was like? So you learned something that you then can apply forward, which I think is pretty neat. You're able to like you had to go through the struggle, as Susan said, for that first strap, and now you know kind of how to do it in the right length and and the way it looks. So that's pretty cool because then you can take that skill forward, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what grade are you going to be in next year, Elizabeth? I'm going to go into fifth grade. Going okay. into fifth grade. Get back, Jack. That's who I have right now in my house. Is that your last year in elementary school there, or do you go to eighth grade? Um, it goes up to sixth grade, actually. I was in a different school, but it wasn't doing enough for me, so I transferred to a new school this year, which is amazing. And it goes up to sixth grade, so I don't have to go to middle school till seventh. Oh, nice. You sound happy about that. You weren't quite yes. ready for the middle school. It seems like middle school has a lot of drama from all, from all the books I've read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Elizabeth, I taught middle school for 10 years, and you're totally right. It is yep. full of drama at middle school. So <laughs> take yeah, I was a counselor at middle school. There is a lot of drama. But, but there are also, I think, a lot of kids that don't get caught up in the drama. And you seem like somebody who's really grounded and going to find your space in middle school. So even though there, there's opportunity to get involved in drama, there's also the opportunity to just kind of channel it all into a creative process, which seems like you're quite the creative person that you know how to do that. Right? Is that what you do? Ch do, channel, do you channel your feelings into your artwork or no? Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, I think, like, sometimes when I'm angry, like, I think once or twice when I was angry, I, like, drew something angry. If I got angry while I was drawing. Or, like, took it and ripped it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and sometimes that's the hard part about doing artwork is you have an idea in your mind about what you want to create. And then making it happen outside of your head and in real life can be really challenging. So it sounds like one strategy you use is to, is to stop and, and wait till it's fun again. But how do you handle that when you're when you get that you hit that point where it's hard or what you had in your mind isn't showing up in real life? So sometimes, so like with the first stress, normally I just like keep on doing it, like like until I get. It. I'm just like keep on doing it, even though I'm really frustrated. I think like the anger helps you work more, and I'm like, hey, I got it. No more anger. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> you use it as motivation to push yourself to to kind of motivate you forward. That's very cool. Do you have any advice, Elizabeth? We're almost done with our interview already, but do you have any advice for kids that are interested in exploring their artwork? Okay. So, first of all, draw what makes you happy. If you want to do something, you can't do it. Like me with anime, I'm, tr I'm trying really hard, but I can never get the hands right. Do not start crying. Just practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. And also... And also, if you like fashion, watch Project One Way. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think for a lot of artists, hands are really hard. So keep, keep at it. Yeah. That's, a, that's one of the, you know, one of the hard things. Yeah, that's really cool. Elizabeth, this was so wonderful to talk to you today. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us. This was so cool. I learned so much. And you're a cool kid. Thank you. I know it's really great. Your your enthusiasm and just confidence and willingness to go in and just bring your vision to life is is really exciting. Um, I, I can't wait to see as you grow what you end up doing. 
Thank you. Will you keep sharing your designs with us? Your dad can share them with me. He knows how to find me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. Class is dismissed. Wasn't that fun? Susan and Megan are always happy to greet you on the next episode of The Awakening Educator. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Education is the foundation for a brighter future. Open your eyes to The Awakening Educator.